friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india let us see management of a hard cataract under topical anesthesia it is better to operate such cases under peribulbar block but this patient was you know insisted too much for topical anesthesia in such cases this is what we can do after applying drops um uh enhancing the anesthesia by subtenon block subtenon is block for the surgeon and topical for the patient so in such hard great five nucleus it is better to get enhanced anesthesia by subtenon block should not depend on topical anesthesia in such cases this is my personal opinion the conjunctiva has sole enough in such cases we will make a nick in the conjunctiva you are going to see that in a short time and now keep the eyeball pressed for some time and then you making a nick here so that the chemosis decreases and now i am going to make the incisions this is the main incision at around 11 o'clock with a 2.8 mm steel keratome the main incision is made and now a side port is made at around 2 o'clock 3 clock hours away from the main incision an air bubble is injected to fill up the anterior chamber beneath this air bubble tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule this is adrenaline phenocaine also has been applied so that we get some more anesthesia intracameral lignocaine has been used along with that there is tropicamide and phenylephrin to keep the people dilated in hard cataracts if we get a dilated people management becomes comfortable now the anterior chamber is filled up with dispersive viscoelastic substance i go to higher magnification this is uh, step magnification basic microscope from topcon topcon's oms 90 we have panasonic camera for recording dslr camera from panasonic gas4 a large rexis has been done in hard cataracts never try to do a small rexis if you are a very expert surgeon you may try but to be on the safer side my opinion is do a large rexis genular stress will be less lateral during lateral separation also the rexis margin will not be stressed a lot of advantages you will get if you do a large rexis the nucleus is being rotated by manually so that genular stress is much less and now is the time to go into the anterior chamber with the phaco needle i'm increasing the exposed part of the tip and now i'm going to do submarine chaff the technique i have developed over the years for dividing such hard cataracts some superficial lens matter is removed so that we can judge how deep we are going we can see the uh, metal of the teeth when it is going through the nucleus yes it is going and it goes through the substance of the nucleus it goes near the opposite equator and stops here 
the chopper is used to get a nice crack. The chopper is very small, it is Mohanta's uh, chopper, it's a modified Sinsky hook, a little stronger, a little thicker than a Sinsky hook. I do multi-level chopping with this. First a crack, then I go to deeper level and divide the nuclear pieces. One heminucleus has been divided into two parts and now each part is being subdivided and emulsified. Yes, see the, there is some kind of floppiness of the iris, though the size of the people is adequate. The iris is tending to prolapse through the side port, but the side port is small and it cannot prolapse. So, one piece has been removed. Still the last portion of the first quadrant and now I go to the second piece. This apex is first made blunt and then the rest of the now, see, as I try to rotate this seminucleus, I struggle, so I come out. Any struggle, come out, do a safer technique, inject visco and now I will use a hook to rotate this. I am using actually two hooks and very easily we can rotate and place it in such a way that we can attack this large heminucleus and divide it into two pieces. One more nick to decrease chemosis. And now, again I go into the anterior chamber with the FECO needle. Okay, the setting, the ultrasonic energy used is 85 percent in continuous mode. Flow rate is 45 ml per minute. Vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury from the very beginning. Only during emulsification of the last piece, I decrease the parameters. So, at this time, I find that there is a, uh, the two pieces are not separate. So, I come out, inject visco, inject some more visco through the side port push the poster capsule down and now I use two hooks. One hook goes below this band that is joining the two fragments, another hook above and the two pieces are easily separated. And now it is without any struggle I can attack the apex of this piece and manage this. Emulsification is done in continuous mode, but the ultrasound is applied intermittently, judiciously. Whenever something is there, I apply energy and that is also intermittently. So this is the piece and this is the last nuclear piece. At this time, it is a safer technique to do I will scaffold if our intuition says so. If we see that the posterior capsule is coming forward, but in this case, I find that the posterior capsule is pushed far back and I emulsified the base. At this time, the parameters are also reduced vacuum 300, flow rate 30 ultrasonic energy 70 percent. This is the last piece of the nucleus, it is emulsified. There is a thread of blood clot over the cornea, we have to remove that. We have to remove the cortex.
and the cortex is being removed by this 23 gauze Simco cannula. Whatever instrument you practice more, that instrument becomes your friend and I find very easy to remove the cortex with this 23 gauze Simco. If you get used to coaxial IA, you will feel that coaxial IA is your best friend. If you use bimanual, you will feel that bimanual is your best friend. Every surgeon has his own comfort level and whatever is your comfort level, follow that. In these matters, don't follow other surgeons. Main concern is the next day, the patient should have clear cornea, quiet anterior chamber, normal intraocular pressure and good vision. This is a hydrophobic, hydrophobic single piece monofocal aspheric intraocular lens from Appasami Associates. Super foam, a beautiful lens. And now, this is the lens is in the bag. And now, I am rotating the lens and checking the other side is in the bag or not because the rexis margin of the other side is not seen. So, I rotate, bring the other haptic at 1 o'clock and see that the other haptic is also under the anterior capsular rim. So, the whole lens is in the capsular bag. Once I am sure that the lens is in the capsular bag, I start removing the visco. First, I irrigate with Simco, irrigate the anterior chamber, irrigate the capsular bag. In this case, there was mild floppiness of the iris and did not cause much problem in the management of the nucleus. But every time we had, we had to increase the surgeon's comfort to manage it in a safer way. No heroics, always maintain the comfort level and do the job nicely. And now this is a moxifloxacin and then the side port is hydrated. The main wound has been constructed in such a way that it will not require any hydration. The main wound has not been stressed and it will not, there is no uh, change in the structure of the wall uh, of the main wound and see it will not require any hydration. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.